First thing we're going to do is launch Android Studio. Let's just take a second. And we're going to create a new Android Studio project. I'm going to call it Live Streams Tutorial. We're going to leave all the options standard for now. So Lollipop for a phone and tablet. I'm going to go in the blank activity. I'm happy to name it my own activity, that's not a problem. It's just configuring it for us now. So the first thing we're going to do is in our activity main, which has been opened for, by default for us, we're just going to select this label that's added for us here. Actually, I'm just going to resize these windows so you can see a bit better. So this label here, and we're just going to scroll down in the properties for ID, and we're going to call it output. Um, and this is the, we're going to output all the text we generate to this label. And we'll just save that and close that. <clears throat> now before before we can reference that in our code, we need to go into the main activity.java, which will have also been opened by default for you. So just expand this imports area. And we're going to be using the text view. So we're going to say import Android dot widget dot text view terminate that line and the next thing we're going to need to do before we can assign any text is we need to get a reference to our text output so we're going to say text view output equals text view and then we're going to call a method called find view by id and the view is in the resources. Its ID is output, which we set earlier. So terminate that line. Looks like we need to clean our project for some reason. If you ever see these red lines everywhere, that usually means something's gone wrong. And if you just hit build and then clean, uh, that usually solves the problems for you. It's quite common when working with Android applications, unfortunately, so it's something to watch out for. Right, so now we've got a reference to our output. Let's start working with some strings. So the first thing we're going to do is assign a basic string. So we'll say string hello world equals. We have to wrap it in double quotes. And we're just going to say hello world And then finally, we're going to reference the output variable we've gained here, and we're going to call a method on that called set text. And we're going to assign that text value of hello world, which we just created earlier. And then we're going to go ahead and run it by clicking this play button here. What this is going to do is launch a new Android simulator. Um, it should just pop up in a second. First time always takes the longest. So we don't want mono for Android, we want uh, Nexus API, that'll do. Click OK. Just takes a couple of seconds. Now the first run of the emulator is always the slowest whilst it fully boots uh, the Android operating system. Also, what tends to happen the first time around is the application doesn't actually launch. So, we'll just unlock the phone. You can see it's a fully working Android device, and we'll just hit play one more time. Now, this time you'll see that there's an emulator already in the list. Just click use the same device for future launches, and you won't have to view this screen every time you run the application. Click OK. 
and you can see hello world from Android Java. So that's us referencing our text view, creating a new string, assigning it a value, and then using the set text method on the output label and assigning it the text of hello world. So let's clear that down. Now that we've created a string and we're comfortable with assigning strings values, let's create a couple of strings and join them together. So we'll create a string called first and we'll assign it the value of the first string. And we'll create the second string called second. And we'll assign it the value of, you probably guessed it, the second string. And then We'll create a third string called join and we'll assign that the value of first plus first plus and then a string in the middle with a space plus oh, actually not just a space we'll put the second plus And what we've done there is we've declared a string called first, we've declared a string called second, we've assigned their values, and then we've declared a string called join, and we're assigning that a new dynamic string plus the string we've assigned up here, plus another new dynamic string, plus the second string we've assigned here. And then finally, we'll call our output label, we'll set text, and we'll set that to the value of join, and then we'll run our program again. And as you can see, first the first string, second the second string. So that's just a really simple way to create strings on the fly and uh, add strings to other strings, uh, which is bread and butter stuff when you're writing applications, really. The next method we're going to look at is the replace method. So say we had a string called template and we assign it a value of hello name, how are you? So it's a basic salutation. And say we want to replace the word name with the customer's name. We might have a string value called name. And we could be assigned to customer's name, Steve. We might then want to output that salutation onto our view, so we'll call the output, we'll set the text value, and we'll set it to template, and then we'll call the replace method, and we'll pass in the string we want to replace, which is name, and the string we want to replace it with, which is our local variable name, which is equal to Steve. And if we go ahead and run our program, And you'll see that the salutation has been displayed on screen and the name variable has been switched in place of the name in uppercase in brackets. So that's really useful if you've got some string templates and you've got some dynamic data that you just want to apply to those templates, you can use the replace method. Um, the next method we're going to look at is the split method. Now sometimes you might have a string that follows a particular pattern we'll create a new one called names and we'll assign it some names so James, John, Mark and as you can see there I've separated them with a comma and that's the pattern that we're going to split them on so if I create a new array so if we say string array split names equals new actually no equals names.split we're going to split them by a comma and what that will do is populate our new array there called split names with all of the names separated from the first string names so the next thing we're going to do is loop over them so we're going to say for string name colon split names 
And what we're effectively saying is for every string name in split names, run this block of code here. So let's do in our little block of code here, we're going to call the output that we created above. We're going to set the text value to name plus and then we're just going to put a separator in the middle of a dash and that that should give us all of the names joined together with this separator uh, so it's kind of similar to how we had them originally except we've split them into an array and we're now looping through them and displaying them on screen so let's run that and see how it looks Not exactly what I was expecting, but let's just have a quick look. Ah, yes, we've assigned the label over the top of itself. So what we actually need to do is add this string onto the outputs dot text value. So we'll get the text. We'll add it to name, and then we'll add the separator. Otherwise, we're just reassigning the label every time. So let's go ahead and run that again. And that's better. You can see James, John, Mark, and Hello World is in there because that's the default value of the string. Um, just to get rid of that, we could call output dot set text, and we'll assign it nothing to begin with. And if we go ahead and run that one more time. James, John, and Mark. So that's splitting strings into an array of strings and then looping through them. Again, this is really useful for working with comma separated value data. Um, you might have a spreadsheet that's full of value, values that you need to load into your program or run some analysis on. You can just export that to a CSV file, load that into your application and you can loop through and split and get column names. It's super easy to do. Next, we're going to look at some string manipulation. So let's say we had a string named upper and we assigned it a value of uppercase in all uppercase. Now let's just say in our label, we only want lowercase characters. So we could output this we set the text value and we'll set it to upper but then we'll call this method on the string called to lowercase and what that'll do is it'll change every character in the upper string to its lowercase representation and then it will output that to the, the label we've created as you can see uppercase has now been made all lowercase and we could do the opposite if we wanted to so we could assign it the value of lowercase and we could call to oh, to uppercase and if we run that you can see that it's done the inverse lowercase is now all uppercase so this can be good if you want to you know if there was a title that you wanted to be all uppercase or uh, I use it quite a lot when searching strings for other strings if I'm not interested in case sensitivity I might convert both strings that I'm searching with to uppercase so that I know there's there's no case issues I have to worry about Sometimes whilst we're running our programs, we might want to do some checks on a particular string to make sure it meets a, a particular criteria or is it's exactly what we're looking for. So there's a few methods available for us to do this. We can declare a string called title and we'll set that to James Rush. Now let's say in our program, we want to make sure that all of our titles begin with the, the, the string Mr. So we could say if title 
dot starts with Mr. Run this block of code here, in which case we'll output. Oh, I don't want to do that. We'll output a string of true. Otherwise, we'll output a string of false. Oh, false. Now, if we run this program, we will see that because the title does not start with Mr., and it's going to output the text false. So let's just have a look at that now. As you can see, false. But if we were to go ahead and change that to Mr. You'd see that our program actually output the string true. Um, starts with has a couple of other methods. So we see the other one would be ends with which would check to see if a string ended with a particular string. So let's just put one in that we know will come out true. We'll press play. As you can see, that's come out true. And the final method we deal with when checking strings is contains. And we'll just use the string ES, which we know is here. And we'll run this one. If everything's good, we'll get a true back. It takes a little while to load. And there you go, true. So that's checking to see if strings begin with, end with, or contain other strings, which is uh, super important for validation and other things like that. And that concludes a very basic introduction to working with strings using uh, Java um, when writing apps for Android in the Android Studio development environment. If you have any questions, please let me know below. If you've liked the video, then please subscribe. Thanks very much.